Hi, my name is Stephen, coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to manage projects using burn up charts. First off, we're going to be looking at the project management tool, which is called the Iron Triangle. And then using those data points, we're going to take them into what's called a burn up chart and show you how you can use that in order to be able to do predictions. Then we'll have a quick look at what happens when things go wrong and how you can maybe use the project burn up chart in order to do the course correction. So let's dive in. So what we have here is called the Iron Triangle of Project Management and it's really straightforward. First off, you have scope. Scope is just a backlog of work, all the things that are needed to be done in order to get a project delivered. Secondly, you've got time. What's the time scale that this project needs to be delivered? And then finally, you've got cost. And in this example, we're going to use resources because typically, especially for knowledge works projects, the major cost that's involved is the resources that you're actually using. You also have quality. And depending on how you're using those scope, time and resources, this can fundamentally affect quality. But in this video, we're really going to be focusing on the three major data points on the outside. So let's have a look then about how you can use these within a burn up chart. So here's our typical burn up chart. On the X axis here, we've got scope and we're calling that in days. And in this axis, we've got um, up to 600 days worth of work. On the bottom of the Y axis, we've got time. And here time, we're calling this in iterations. Now iterations uh, could be different depending on the organization that you're in. It could be weeks, it could be two week sprints, it could be months. It doesn't really matter. It's that point in time when you're reflecting on the project to have a look to see how things have gone and where things are going in the future. In this project, uh, we've got say, uh, we've got a constraint of 16 iterations. Maybe this is two week blocks. So this is going to be 32 weeks. This is an eight month project. You know that that time scale for what needs to be done is around that sort of eight months. You've got a constraint of around about 600 days. You know, typically that's the amount of work that you expected to come through the pipeline here. So with these two constraints in place, then what you do is you start to work through um, the backlog that's there. So here in this example, on this first iteration, this might be a two week sprint, potentially you're churning through, say, 50 days worth of work. Now, really importantly here, this isn't elapsed time of 50 days, and this is 50 days across the whole team. So you might have a team of five or six people over a two week period. This is how much work they actually got to done, properly completed work that has been estimated from that backlog. In the next iteration, potentially they're doing maybe 30 or 40 days worth of work and getting that to done. Then things are getting a bit hard. They're into that third iteration and things are getting a bit tougher and they've only got maybe 10 or 20 days worth of work done at this point. And typically you keep doing this across iter every iteration that's going here. As a aside, we are saying talking about days here. You can also use story points. And typically this is where burn up charts came from. But, but burn up charts can work for both story points and for days as your unit of measurement. Once you've worked out uh, and tracked those days um, of the amount of work done that you've managed to get done every iteration, then you can make a projection. And the projection is based on what's called your velocity, how much work you're getting done in each period of time within each iteration. And by doing that, you're able to then make a projection to see you know, where this is going. If you keep going at this sort of rate, how far are you going to get? Really importantly, what you're also tracking here is you're tracking scope. Now, in this example, what we have here is that the, uh, there's about 450 days worth of work. So it's a bit less than that 600 day was there and things have bounced around a little bit. Some things were taken out, some things were added in. Maybe things were just refined as they actually got down into the detail. Things were a bit more difficult than they thought and that's why you see the step change. But it's really important that you're tracking both the scope as well as the work done that's going on. So again, you make, can make another projection. You know, say, well, if this is the scope that we have, this is the amount of scope that we need to deliver. You can start to make a prediction. And as you can see here in this project, it looks like things aren't going to quite make it to plan. That projection is going out and it's past that 16 mark of the constraint that you have. You know, it's coming in at 17 iterations. So it's potentially going to be a couple of weeks late. What can you do then? 
there are a number of things you can do here. So going back to the iron triangle, you can play with the scope. So you can decrease that scope. Maybe there's things in there that you can take out. Uh, maybe there's some nice to haves, right? Maybe there's some things that you can maybe delay until, f until future releases. So by playing with that scope, you decrease the scope. And as you can see here, the prediction now is that it's going to be 15 iterations. So it's going to be within that boundary. So it looks like the project's going to come in in time. The other thing that you can play with is you can increase velocity. Now here, there's two different things which you can do to improve velocity. One is that you can typically just add extra resources. You know, you can bring more people into the teams that are actually doing the work. But you can also look at efficiencies about how the work is actually getting done as well. Maybe there's improvements within that sort of development pipeline that you have, that if you improve that, that would improve the overall velocity, which would mean there's a better chance of you hitting this. And in this case, we're, we're making this prediction that it's going to come in on iteration 15. So we're within our 16 iteration uh, constraint that we have. Now, the other thing that happens, and typically this happens a lot, is that, well, the scope might not be able to be changed. The velocity, maybe there's not much more you can do with it. There's no more people that you can add and you've already tightened all your processes. So what can you do? Well, you can push out time. So here we're saying that we're going to move out into iteration 18. And you know, you're going to give it an extra month. And because of that, it looks like you're now going to be able to hit your dates. In summary, predictions are made regularly on actual data. This is what the real power of this tool is. You're constantly feeding new information into the tool in order to make predictions on an iteration by iteration basis. Based on that, you can look at different sorts of course corrections and then you can validate whether those course corrections have actually occurred. You can play with your scope, taking things in or out. You can look at your velocity, maybe adding resources or tightening up your development process, or you can move out time. You know, these are the big variables that you have to play with. Now look, this is really easy to use, but it's also surprisingly robust. It's been used in many, many very large projects to some great success. Many thanks for watching this video. If you could like and subscribe, that would really help us to grow this channel and we'd love to hear your comments below. Till the next time, cheers.